to get started with this process, we're just going to create a new folder, which I will call UI. I'll be placing this in the base blueprints folder. And then inside of here, we'll just be creating a brand new widget class. To find these, we're going to right click. We'll go to the user interface option. So not under blueprints this time. And we're going to go to the widget blueprint option here. The naming convention for these classes will be WBP underscore. So widget blueprint underscore, and then the name of the class. I'm just going to call this one player health. Inside of the class, if you're not familiar, we're going to take a very kind of brief overview here. But what we have in the middle here is a canvas. So this is kind of like the workspace in which we can add our different elements to make up the interface. In this case, that's just going to be a health bar, but this could also make up things like menus. We could add in buttons, text, and many other things to this canvas here. And we can see that's represented to the left hand side. We have our canvas. And if we were to drag things onto the canvas, we'll see that does appear within this screen space just here. To drive the health bar though, what we're going to need is a progress bar. So this is pretty much set up perfectly. Uh, we have control over filling this, so we can fill this with a value, which in this case is going to represent our health. I'm just going to drag this out to make this a little bit longer, and I think that should be a pretty decent size. Now, the way that this works is we have this percentage value just down here on the right hand side when we have this selected and basically as we drag this up and down we have control over how full this is now we can see this is a normalized value between zero and one so we'll need to do a quick calculation a bit later to take into account our health value and get this to display between a value of zero and one based on how much health the player has left now another thing is if you've seen any of my other content or tutorials uh, you may be familiar with my disdain to this gradient fault uh, kind of unreal texture here so the most important and first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop down to the appearance we'll go to the style option over here and we want to change the background image and the fill image so we don't get this weird gradient thing going on at the top here it also means as well this is a nice way to jump in and find out how to update and change the style of your health bar if you had something custom that you wanted to bring into the engine to use here. So I don't have anything made for this. What I'm generally do with these just to make them look a little bit more kind of modern and uh, go for that minimal approach is we're going to drop down the background first of all. Ideally we'd have a texture that we've brought in especially for something like this a nice kind of pixel texture would be pretty good as we don't have that and of course using the images that we have isn't really going to work here. What I'm going to do instead is go to these view options down here I'm going to toggle on to show the engine content. I'm just going to search for a white square. And we can see here uh, we have the white square texture, and that's going to be perfectly fine. It doesn't really matter how big it is because that's all scaled based on these options just here. But we can see we've now just got a plain white texture in the background. That still leaves this weird sort of gradient thing for the fill. So again, in the style, uh, I'm just going to copy this. We can right click, copy this, and then paste this into the fill image here. And we can see that's been replaced as well. Now, in this case, for whatever reason, that hasn't actually worked properly. So if that does happen, then we can just select one of the others and maybe select back just so we're using the same texture on both. So we have to pull less in from the engine content that way. So we're going to use the same white square texture in both slots. So we can now see that does look immediately a lot better than it did and still works in exactly the same way because that scaling is happening automated based on the images being passed in. So we still get the full option to uh, change this percentage bar and that will either fill or completely deplete our health bar. Now once you've taken this step, the next thing we want to do is make sure that we go back down to the view options and then untick the show engine content. Otherwise we're gonna get a lot more information in this search bar than we want. Generally, I think things like health have a fairly uniform color, which I think most people would agree is green. So I'm gonna change this from blue and change this to some kind of green to yellow tint here. And again, I think that's gonna be pretty good for our health system. Now, another thing you can change if you've never used the progress bar before, you can also change. So this is gonna update the color of the health as we change that percentage slider. If you wanted to also change the background color, we can give our style a color as well. So we're gonna change the tint of the background and we can make this something darker or lighter um, or something completely different, depending on how you wanted this to look. So I'm just gonna go for a nice, simple gray background, slide this to a slightly darker gray just here. Maybe not full black, but a dark gray with a nice bright green health bar should look pretty good. So for the percentage, we can leave that because we'll be doing all of this in code, but this gives us a nice way to visualize what's happening before we get the code going. Now, what I want to do at the moment, of course, if we just go ahead with this, we don't have this being called, we will not be seeing this in game. So before we add any logic in here, uh, let's go ahead back over to our player class. 
and inside of the player class we can start creating our health widget and making sure that we display this. So it's quite simple, if you haven't worked with widgets before, what we want to do is on the begin play we want to create a widget, so we're just going to call the create widget function. And from this we want to pass in the widget to create, which is going to be our WBP underscore player health. And a lot of people may think this would be working now if you press play just to double check that it's not. And this is because we've created the object, but we haven't done anything with it. So this does exist, but we just haven't told it to display or how to behave. So what we want to do is from the return value, now that we have this, we're going to promote this to a variable first of all, because we will be using this a little bit later. We're going to want to call various functions and update values on our widget system later. So it's going to be useful to have a reference to this. So we're going to call this one health widget ref. So we have a reference now to the health widget whenever we need to do anything with this again. And then from here, we'll be calling a widget specific function, which is add to viewport. So we've got the add to viewport option, and that quite simply takes this object and will tell the system to display it on the player's current screen. So that means now if we come in, we can see that we have our widget. Uh, of course, something just happened a little bit strange there. We can see at the top left hand side, we have our health which is showing as expected. Now it seems somewhere along the line, the update flipper book function has somewhat broken with the jump animation. So it seems as though I've just not got anything filled in the jump slot. Just in case you have that same issue, I'll keep this in the video. That should have been assigned earlier. I think that was working previously, but uh, we'll just double check so now we can jump, fall and run. And all of that's perfectly fine. Just in case you were getting the same issue though. The main thing was the focus of the health bar here. So we now have the health bar displaying. Of course, we can take damage. We still have our function to call our damage, our kind of debug. So we can see that I've pressed H several times there and we have it debugging that the player has died. But of course that isn't syncing up with our health widget. So that's gonna be the next step. So back in the widget class, we just need to add some functionality to register when a health value has been updated. Now I want to show you first of all, the way that I still see a lot of people doing this in certain tutorials online. And it's a habit that I kind of want to help people get out of. And it's kind of bad practice and I'll show you why as we go through. So we're going to do it the bad way first of all, just so that you know to avoid this and the ways around this if you see it in the future. Now what you might see is people will come down to the percentage value here and we have a binding option and we can bind this to a new function. So if we press that button, this is just taking us from the designer view here to the graph view. So the designer view is where we add all of our visualization, all of our elements and flesh out that widget. And then the graph is kind of like our event graph essentially in any other blueprint. So this is where we put all of our logic and basically adding that binding is just automatically creating a function for us and binding the return value of that function to our widget element. So in this case, it's a value float value because this is bound to the float percentage value. Now the reason that this is bad, what you'll find people do is they'll get the player pawn. So we use the default functionality and let's say they'll just do something simple like casting to make sure that it's the player base. Uh, we know that inside of the player base, we have our health value so they can then get the health value. And then they'll plug that in and potentially plug this in. Now this isn't going to work because that calculation I mentioned, we need to, to uh, normalize this value. But again, we're not going to keep this. This is pretty bad. This is just kind of an example of how not to do it. So you know what to avoid and then we'll see why. So what this is doing though, we're binding this to the player class, we're casting and then checking what the current health value is. So if we press play, we can see that is now updating and I'm going to need to press this quite a lot and then the health is going to go down to zero. So we now at least have that updating but let's see why this isn't such a good idea. So what's actually happening here is this is working somewhat like a tick event. So if we throw a print string in here and we'll just print hello, it doesn't matter what this is saying, and then press play, even when the health isn't being updated, even when we're just completely idle and not doing anything at all, we have our bound functionality here, just checking, constantly running. And in this case, not just constantly running, but constantly casting to another class, constantly refreshing this kind of memory location and all of the variables that might be within this class are being passed to and from just to double check that the health value hasn't changed. So that was really the entire kind of point of that side tangent here is whenever you see people, if you're following other content and they recommend using a binding, kind of skip that bit, really not very good practice. And what we want to do is we're going to unbind this. So we'll remove this binding, really just never use this button. I think it was a legacy kind of carryover for in-house testing, which just never got removed is really not meant to be part of the uh, development pipeline. And whilst casting and event ticks are not 
completely sacrilege. They can be used in games perfectly fine. If you imagine that you had an, an entire widget, not just one health bar, but an entire widget, a mana bar, your player text, uh, the icons and everything around a more fully fleshed out kind of widget. At that stage, you're not just doing this binding and casting once. You could be doing it 5, 10, 15 times per widget just to check that nothing's happened. So hopefully that kind of makes sense why we're not going to do that. So what we need to do to tidy this up, we're going to just completely delete this. We'll get rid of that percentage function. We can go back as well and we'll rename our health bar from progress bar to player health bar. Just because when we come back over to the graph section, that now shows the name in a more kind of logical way. We know exactly what we're looking at. So we do want another function though. What we're going to do is we're going to drop this down into a function. We're going to name this one update health. And this is a little bit more of a manual approach. So it does take a little bit longer to do it this way. But again, we're saving that performance and we're really kind of in full control then over when this gets called. So instead what we'll do is drag in the player health bar reference, the, the asset which is being used in the designer. We're going to pull from here and we're going to call the set percentage function node. So the percent, remember, is the thing that we can drag up and down, normalize between zero and one, and we just want to hook this up. So whenever this function is called, which should only be done when the health is actually changing, so when we're picking up a health bonus or when we're taking damage, we're then going to pass this pin into the health function and we can call that across. Now again, remember, this is expecting a number to put between zero and one and our health is currently between zero and 100. So as we've seen previously, what this does is at the moment, if we keep calling this, it's only going to change when it's either over one or less than one, which is in our case gonna be when it hits zero. So we're not gonna see the, uh, the health bar moving up and down. Instead, what we want to do to normalize a value is quite simple. We're going to, the reason I've dragged this in is because we now have a float value called in percent, and we're just gonna change this one to be called health. And then quite simply, we want another value, which is the default or maximum health. So I'm going to add another value here and change this to a float and name this one max health. And basically a normalized value is just going to be our current value divided by the maximum value. So we'll pull this from here and we're going to divide our health by our maximum health and plug in that normalized value. So that's always going to return now a value between zero and one. If that doesn't fully make sense, just throw a print string on the end of this and do some tests and see what happens when we go through and call this function in a moment. But basically, if we have a, a health of 50 and we divide that by 100, of course, we're going to get 0.5. So this is how we're getting that value from 0 to 1. We're never going to go past that range. Then the way that we use this, so this is actually the health function ready to go for us. And remember, we've got that reference on the player class. So we'll return here. And what we want to do is when we begin play, let's create a function that we're going to call on the begin play first of all named update health okay and inside of update health we're going to get our widget reference we're going to call that function here which was again update health and we just want to pass in what our current health is and then remember that's going to be divided by our maximum health which in this case is our default health because remember in the construction script we're setting the health to be default health and we're also in the health system we're making sure that we never go past the maximum is never going to be more than default health so this is why we've set it up this way it's all kind of coming together now and the reason that i'm doing this on begin play is remember the way that we can kind of play around with the widget here so like i've said it's really nice that we can come in check the different styles if we ever want to check the color of the background of our health bar we can always play around with this percentage bar here we can then come in, play with the different colors, add some different images, and we may forget to reset this to either full or minimum. So what we want to do in our player class is make sure we have full control over this. So on the begin play, once we've created the widget, we're also just gonna call our update health function and we'll let that do its thing. Now, the next thing is when we take damage, we can also do this down here. So in between our branch to check whether or not we've died, again, whenever we have the health being updated, we're gonna to want to call that update health function. So we'll just pull from here the update health function here and remember if you're doing that between two execution pins it will always fill that final execution pin for you so now what should happen is although we haven't updated or changed our widget here in the other uh, kind of visual element of this we're going to call that function on begin play that will find out that we have full health so it should fill our health for us and then if we play around with our debug health system so the uh debug button that we have here the apply damage then we should see our widget being updated so here we have full health press H and this is going down a small percent based on what I have here. So 20%, which is looking about right for that normalized value. If I make this 50 damage, so half of our health, then we're going to lose half of a bar. And then the next half we have died. So again, we can just double check that 
our maths is definitely doing the right thing. And let's say 99, we should have like the tiniest sliver of health. And we can see that we've got pretty much one health left. And again, one more time and we've died. So we know that this is working correctly. This is the main thing. This is why we add these handy kind of debug functions in just to check when we're doing new systems that they are being implemented correctly. Before we even have enemies and things like that, we can easily test things with this. Now, what I'll do is I'll also, this is a little bit hard to find. I'm just going to call this debug in a comment and I'll make this red. So we'll never forget that at some point we probably want to remove this. We don't want this to be shipped because of course we don't want the player to be playing around with the keyboard and then suddenly taking health off. So we'll come back and remember to remove this when we've completely finished with the health system. So back in the widgets, that is pretty much everything. So we just double check. We have all of this tidied up. We don't really need a comment here. We can see that's just normalizing a value, making sure that we don't have our binding. Hopefully again, that makes sense why we don't bind anything to a widget function, whether that's a button, a set of text, a progress bar, nothing really needs to be bound. It's nicer to have this full control. And you can see now that this function is only being called at these specific times that we think something might need to be updated on the player's health. So on the begin play, and at the moment in the damage system. That should be all we need to do in the widget class and the player for a little while. So what we'll do, in fact, we're gonna use the player in just a moment for the enemy damage. So we can just close the widget class for now, make sure that we've compiled and saved all of our updates. So if you've been enjoying this topic, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And of course, hit the notification bell so that you'll get the updates as soon as the next topic in this playlist goes live. And remember, if you wanted access to the full mini course all in one go, you can get that through the Skillshare link down below or through the gold tier Patreon or above rewards. Just wanted to give a big thank you to all of the people already supporting me over on Patreon. It is, of course, your support that allows me to make the more in-depth topics like this mini course for the channel. As ever, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.